All right, hello everybody. Welcome back, Carl again. Uh, today I want to talk about um, this Arduino Ethernet shield, and this is not a Rev3 board because it does not have the SDA and SCL lines broken out here. This is actually what um, I found to be called a Rev5. Now this board is available on eBay for about I don't know between seven and nine dollars. Really inexpensive. It has the Wiznet W500 chip. So this is not the PIC clone here or the ENCJ. It has an SD card and it's mega compatible because the pins are actually broken out here to the ISCP header. Now, uh, this shield I broke um, and I tried to fix the chip and it wasn't working. So I was gonna buy a new chip, but it's actually cheaper to buy a whole new shield than it is to buy just this chip. Anyhow, nevertheless, what I don't like about this shield is that it has an SD card. And just because the SD card is there, there's no way now to use pen 4. And I don't really like that. And I don't need an SD card for my project, but I lose a digital pen because of that. Nevertheless, the point of this video is if you have an Arduino Ethernet shield, there's no way to deselect um, this board from being the master for the SPI pens. So in my current project, I wanna use an ethernet shield with an uh, NRF uh, 24 lo one module. And there's no way for this to deactivate and actually work. And the reason for that I found, let's slide this in, is that they essentially tie this pen here, which is actually uh, pen 31, which is SEN. I don't know if you can see that, and if you tie that pin uh, constantly high, it's always in master mode and it's always on. You cannot deselect it. So, I'm not sure what the people at Arduino were thinking when they designed it because the people at Freetronics, which is an Australian company, and this is actually their shield, they, on pin 31, they put this little uh, MOSFET, the 2N7002. And by using this and tied into pin 10, they actually can turn this chip on and off and allow other devices on the SPI bus. Now, I live in America and the Freetronics is an Australian company and it is super expensive to ship their products from Australia to here. Nevertheless, um, the good folks have published their uh, schematics. So, this is a pretty simple hack, at least in my opinion, very painless. We'll put a 2N7002 uh, in there. So. I've already done this on my other shield and it works great. What you have to do is take this chip off here. Now, this is some kind of buffer chip. It's a, a 74 LVC 14AD. And on the pinout, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 are all tied to ground. And then 11 is ground, 12 is pin 31 of the W5 5100, um, pin 13 goes to 29, which also runs to digital pin 10 um, of the Arduino IDE, and then pin 14 is VCC. So, if you take this chip off, you only need to be concerned with ground, um, pin 12, which is goes to pin 31 of the W5-5100 chip, uh, pin 29, and then VCC. So, if we come back to this schematic here, we'll see that what we actually want to do is tie the source to ground, the gate to pin 10, which is also number 13 on this chip here. And then finally, we're going to put the um, drain to pin 31 of the W500 chip. And that just so happens to be pin 12. Now, um, you'll also see that there's a resistor here, and that actually just holds the line high. So the nice thing about this particular um, uh, in-channel MOSFET is that when it is, when you select it high, it stays high until you actually make it go low. So this is like the perfect solution, at least in my opinion. So you can go on to any Lorne line vendor of your choice. Here I have some little tiny SOT 23s of that 2N7 uh, chip. And I also have in my, just so happen to have in my components, I have a 2N7000. So um, for the data sheet, 
as you can see here, it says in channel enhancement mode field effect transistor to in 7000, 7002 in NDS. And uh, the only difference is uh, that between the 7000 and 7002 is some maximum drain current. Now, for the purposes of uh, this Arduino shield, I don't think that little bit makes a difference. Plus, I had this on hand. So, with the chip laying down, it shows the legs, drain, gate, and source. So what I did was I actually removed this chip. Now, in my opinion, the simplest way is to use a um, rework station, which I have. There was a video I did on that. And blow some hot air on it, and a little pair of tweezers, and the chip comes right off. Now, you don't have that station? No worries. These chips are... Uh, super not important just cut these legs kind of high to the chip package surface you know cut it up here with an exacto knife um let me see here up up in here just cut these legs off clip them with some clippers get the chip out of there and you can actually heat each one of these legs and it will come right off so um again what you need to be worried about is let me just flip this back over you're worried about this pen, which is pen number 14, this pen, which is 13, this is 12, and this is 11. So once you take this chip off, uh, you actually can take this little transistor, stick it on there, solder the two pins to pin 12 and 13. And then what I did was I took this little display here, um, which is actually the, find my other paper here. I actually took the uh, source, which goes to ground, and I bent the leg around, and I actually put this to here, and then uh, actually use this point right here as my ground. So I just put a little little dab of um, solder from that as my ground, and then use pin 12 and 13, and that's it. It works great. Uh, no cutting of wires, no cutting of traces, I should say. Very simple. If you happen to have a rework station, you can actually pull this chip off, put the transistor on, and then you can put this chip back on if you so desire. Now, unfortunately, I am a knucklehead and decided to not turn my camera on when I did this mod. So I don't have any footage of that. Now, I do have this shield, also had from eBay, relatively inexpensive. And this is like the Rev1 version. And it just so happens that this programming header has ground on one side and then it goes to um, pin 31 of this chip. Now what I did was I ran a little jumper wire from here over to here on the SD card slot that's unpopulated because it's not supported. And that uh, actually ties to pin 4. So I essentially I made this work um, just like this transistor, but you have to use two pens. Now, I don't really like that, and I think what I'm going to do is actually come to this side. I'm going to solder a little wire from pin 10, run it up through this hole, and then over to here where my transistor is. Um, I did also make this uh, little converter board which has pins that actually plug into the headers, and then it has a bunch of these wires that actually break it out to the ICSP header, and then I run it to the ICSP pin so I can plug it in and actually make it work. So anyhow, I just wanted to do a quick video on um, how I actually hacked my Ethernet shield to allow other SPI devices. Um, I'll put links to uh, this data sheet here. Um, also found a really great website that has all of the um, Ethernet shield uh, schematics and design files from all the way back to Rev1. So I post uh, that gentleman's uh, blog because that's really excellent. That helped me, allowed me to do this. And then I'll post the uh, link for the free Tronics. Okay, so Carl back. Um, this is a follow-up to my Ethernet shield hack. I know what's going to happen. I'll post the video and everybody's going to say, well, I want to see you do it. So what I'm going to do is use this shield and go ahead and make the mod. I'm going to take this chip off, this LVD chip, uh, put my... Um, uh, in channel MOSFET, the 2N7002, um, on this board and actually show you how I did the mod. So, if this is no interest to you, go ahead and skip this video. But I'm going to use my hot air rework station. I'll get it to about 400 degrees, um, heat this chip up gradually, and then go ahead and pull the part off. All right, there it is. As you can see, the chip came off. Just a couple of seconds of heating the part. And 
here is the old chip and we'll just set that over there so um, I found the easiest way with these chips I can never seem to remember which way it goes where um, if you look at the data sheet it actually so shows the part being face down so what I'm gonna do is face it straight down and then bend the legs up the legs up so um, this is the flat face of the transistor and the leads are actually bending back and you'll notice the source pen which is the one on the far right now this far right pen is actually bent over and that's what I need to connect to ground so uh, looking at the free tronics schematic it shows source to ground so what I'm gonna do is just um, take this and also shows that the gate goes to digital pin 10 a digital pin 10 is actually number 13 of the uh, chip that we just removed here so that's the gate and the data sheet says the gate is the middle so I'm actually going to attach the gate first um, to digital to this pin 13 and then that'll allow me some room so it, it just so happens to be that uh, 13 and 12 are my numbers so this middle pin or gate goes to uh, 13 and then the right pin excuse me this middle pin goes to gate and then this right pin is actually the drain and that's actually going to go to uh, number 12 on this part here so um, you can put a little flux if you like what I found it the best way to do is just gonna put a little solder on these pads And then, um, so I got the component on there. Now all I need to do is bend this leg without ripping the pads off. And I'm gonna actually, like I said, put it right on this pad here, which is the ground for the switch. Right, a little bit of heat a little bit of solder um, get in there with my uh, magnifying glass here and actually check the connections and I actually like to just take my exacto knife and just kind of run through make sure I don't have any little bridges in there If it's connected to ground or not, if you accidentally short it out, you're probably still going to be okay. It just won't work the way you want it to work. So I like to just take a little bit of solder. I mean, excuse me, my exacto knife, and just check it. All right, and so that's it. And so I'll take you off the tripod here and bring you in for a closer look. Um, uh, as you can see, see if my uh, high-speed macro mode works. There is the chip connected to those pins. It's connected to the ground. And pin um, 12 and 13. And that's it, that's all you have to do. Now, what I did was I put a, I test it first, and then I take a little bit of hot glue, and I just put a little dab of glue just to kind of protect the transistor. The good thing is it's not higher than the, um, as you can see, it's not higher than the shield headers so that means it'll fit uh, it'll still stack nice and now when you uh, use your shield as design and according to the Arduino website if you want to deselect the board you write it as high so when you write it as high that turns this shield off and allows you to use other devices on SPI when you write it low that turns the shield on and allows it to work so anyhow hopefully this um, kind of mod is easy for you if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them down below. I'll see what I can do to answer them. Uh, but then, uh, thanks again for taking the time to watch this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually uh, mod my uh, Rev1 board here with my uh, transistor mod. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I 
All right, so that's my wire attached to uh, digital pin 10. And then I'm going to just grab a transistor. And I'm going to go ahead and actually use the surface mount one. So I'll just grab my um, schematic here, pull out one of these SOT23 transistors. Now we have the uh, transistor part here on the data sheet. And the single one by itself is the drain. And according to my Vitronic schematic, the drain actually goes to um, pin 31 of the chip, which is broken out here on this header. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this little jumper link that I put on there off So that's off. So now I'm just going to solder this SOT23 right to that point that was there. Also going to ground is the source, which is this far right pin. So I might turn it this way so that the chip actually looks like this. So I'm going to try to connect a drain to that programming pad and that source to that ground pin. I'm actually at an angle and see if I can't make two connections with one spot here. All right, so it's kind of got it tacked down. I'm just going to put a little heat and move it just a little bit. All right, and I got it. All right. All right, so there you go. There you can see it. Now you can see the SOT23 chip. I got the drain to the ground. Excuse me, the drain to uh, pin 10, the source. Um, to that ground pad and the only thing of that is that one little pin which is next to the uh, the p and the r right there and i'm going to connect that this um brown wire that i brought from arduino digital pin 10 to that so let's go ahead and do that now so again that's this wire here that i need to just connect to that last little one now probably would have been better off using something like a wire wrap wire something nice and small um which i do have but um, unfortunately i didn't think about that at first so We'll just use what we have here. Strip a little bit of wire. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna tend this in. Just put a little bit of solder on the end of this wire now. And then I'll even put a little solder on the end of that chip. And that way I can touch the two together and hopefully they'll stick here. Yeah, and this definitely, I definitely made this too big, this wire. And this is actually uh, like 24, 25 gauge wire. It's already pretty small. But nevertheless, uh, now all I need to do is put a little glue on this wire to hold it in place. And um, let me actually flip this around. And... On. and there you go there you can see kind of the mod okay so now we can use this ethernet shield on the arduino control unit using the arduino digital pin uh, number 10 and actually be able to control multiple spi devices on our bus anyhow hopefully this was useful uh the only thing i'm going to do to tie this up is i'm going to keep my heat gun up and put a little dab of heat a glue here and a little dab of glue there just to keep the connections tidy and that's it all right guys thanks for watching